get your mind off of Jesus and you're going to walk out of here worse than you were when you came in. But if you give it to him, I tell you, we sung. So yeah, we, didn't, we didn't hardly sing that song um, a few moments ago. What a fellowship. We sung at it. Are y'all with me? We sung at it. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. I'm going to tell you, when you're leaning on Jesus, you're going to sing that song. You're going to sing that song. You're leaning on Jesus. Have you ever lost somebody that you love and you still going on? That's leaning on Jesus. You ever been sick and you're still sick and you're going on anyhow? Leaning on Jesus. We've got to learn how to sing. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Because that's true. And you lean on him not just on Sunday from 10 to 12. You lean on him every day. Every day of your life. Every day of your life. It's so good to be here this morning. We thank God for uh, Brother Reed opening us up. And Brother Jordan leading us in songs of praise. To God, Brother James leading us in the collection and the communion, Brother Chris leading us in the reading of the Word of God, and Brother Ron lifting up prayer to God on our behalf. We thank our young men who uh, walk around and make sure that everything is comfortable for us as we uh, worship. We thank God for your presence, and if you are visiting with us this morning, Thank you for being with us this morning. It's our pleasure to have you in our midst. And we pray that your being here will be a blessing to your life and a glory to God. We're going to study from Mark chapter 12. The verses are 28 through 31. And I'm going to read verses 29 and 30, and then we will share the subject under which we will study. The Bible says, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The subject under which we will study on today is entitled vision correction, vision correction. Jesus, our savior who died for our sins, was buried, who rose from the dead, who purchased the church of Christ with his own blood and who adds everyone to it who will hear the gospel, believe the gospel, repent, confess him to be the Christ, and is baptized for the remission of their sins. This Jesus is in opposition to the Sadducees who believe that there is no resurrection. This question that Jesus is asked, is being asked by the scribes, being asked in the midst of Sadducees. The Sadducees were engaged in asking Jesus a question they thought would cause him to answer in a manner that violated the Old Testament law, which would show him to be a false teacher. 
I want you to think about this. The Savior, the very Son and revelation of God, the one who had come to give life and life abundantly, who came to bring men into a right relationship with God, was standing in their midst. The very embodiment of God while standing there in the midst of the scribes, the Sadducees, and all the Jews that were witnessing this episode in Jesus' ministry. Can you imagine how you would feel if the very embodiment of God was in this room? I believe that many of us would have a different posture. I believe that there would be different things going through our minds. I believe that we would have a different attitude because of his presence. Here was one who would not only provide salvation, he would give men God's perspective of what life was intended to be. Life with significance, life with meaning, life with purpose, life being a child of God. And yet all around the Savior, all around Jesus, there was opposition. He's in the midst of people who claim to be lovers of God, followers of God, children of God, obedient to God, and yet he's surrounded by opposition. Satan was working through his various methods, schemes, and instruments to turn men away from God's plan of salvation. And make no mistake about it, Satan was using people who claim to be children of God. I know we say we're Christians this morning, but as we study God's word, let's be mindful of the fact that Satan wants to infiltrate the lives of people who claim to be children of God. And for this reason, you and I must embody the core values of Jesus. We must embody this core value. I will love God first. Then I will be able to love myself and other people. You know, the second commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself. I've got to love myself, but I cannot love myself until I love God first. And many people are confused. Many people are upset, depressed, bewildered because they cannot figure out why is it that I can't love myself, treat myself right. Well, the answer is you cannot love yourself without loving God first. Are y'all with me? Yeah, we must embody the core values of Jesus that we're studying so that we will not nor never be consciously the instrument of Satan. Just as Jesus faced such opposition, we too see such opposition growing with each passing day. All around us are forces at work to distract us and delude and deter us from experiencing God's plan and vision for us as individual believers. We have individual lives. And, and, and many times we have forces working against us that distract us and delude us and deter us from experiencing, experiencing God's plan in our individual lives. Not just our individual lives, but also as members of the body, as a collective body. We see people uh, 
in despair. We uh, see the divorce rate skyrocketing, abuse in the home, disease, crime, abortion, gangs, suicide, incest, child abuse, rape, drive-by shootings, drugs, and the inability of our government to handle our problems, all because we are a people who seek man-made solutions and we ignore the scriptures. So the list of problems continue to grow, problem after problem. Every time we look around, there's another problem. Some of us don't even watch the news expecting any good news. We, we, we want, we're watching the news because we want to see what bad things are happening. So I've got a question. Is it possible today that the major focus of the church is the church rather than her focus being the world, that is being a light in the midst of the horrible darkness of this world? Is it possible that our major focus is the church, the church itself, rather than our focus being the world? All because to a very large degree, the church is not grasping the truth of this passage and therefore has limited Vision. See, if our focus is just on the church, then our vision is limited. Our vision is limited of what life in Christ should be. I want us to remember as we examine this passage that Jesus' conflict was with the Sadducees. They were experts in the Old Testament scriptures but they had missed the truth of the word of God. And the same can apply to us. We can worship. I believe that our order of worship is scriptural. We sing, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. That's scriptural. We pray. We partake of the communion every first day of the week. That is scriptural. We give to God as we prosper every first day of the week. That is scriptural. We preach on the first day of the week. That is scriptural according to Acts 20 and verse number 7. All the items of worship that we are experiencing and leading in are scriptural. And remember, Jesus' opposition was not with people who did not know the scriptures. Are y'all with me? Don't get quiet on me now. We can be an opposition even though we come together and we practice worship as the scriptures direct. Our vision can be limited. And it takes Jesus to provide us with some vision correction. All right, now, listen. Jesus addressed the question of the scribe in our text by quoting what the scribe knew was the scripture, okay? He, Jesus quotes what he is an expert in. See, scribe means that he was the one, if somebody wanted a copy of the scripture, they did not have a printing press. They had scribes who would copy it word for word. So he knew what the scripture said. Jesus quotes the scripture to him. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 4. The Bible says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, 
with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thy eyes and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Jesus identifying these commandments as the greatest teaches them and us that seeing, being able to visualize God over ourselves requires accepting the oneness of God. This is where the vision should be corrected. We must see God over ourselves and demonstrate love to him. This will cause a child of God to follow God rather than following their lust. Watch the word of God in Numbers chapter 15, beginning at verse number 39. Listen to what God says to the children of Israel. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them that ye seek not after your what? Own heart and your own eyes. In other words, God wants us to look at him first rather than a functioning off of our own sight and our own feelings. You remember the proverbial writer says, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart and lean not unto that own understanding. Acknowledge him in some of your ways. All your ways and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3 and verse 4 and 5. So he says, after which ye used to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. God wanted then and he wants today his people to place his commandments first. That is over and above our own heart and eyes. Listen to Matthew chapter 6. This is Jesus, verse 31. Many of you can quote the passage, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, many times, church, it seems like, and I, I know I, I, I know what I'm talking about because I live in the same world that you live in. Are y'all with me? I, I believe that many times when we read this passage of scripture, we want to skip that first part and go to the last phrase. And all these things shall be added unto you. We, we want to skip right down to the end. What we really want is all the things added to us. But Jesus prefaced that. If you want all the things added to you, you've got to do what? Seek him first. Seek him first. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's how we are. That's how we are. You, you fill it out of application. It's telling you, uh, uh, it's asking, do you own your home? And you and you click yes, yeah. and, and you paying a mortgage. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. See, our world has taught us that if we're paying a mortgage, we own it. Yeah. You don't own it yeah. until it's paid for. Yeah. If you don't pay that note, there's what is called a foreclosure. Uh-huh. 
In other words, we gonna close on the deal before the maturity date. Why? Because you won't pay. Are y'all with me? And as a result of the foreclosure, you do not own the house. Are y'all with me? But the fact of the matter is you didn't own it because you were paying a note on it. Are y'all with me? See, we want to skip to. There are certain things in our society that, that, that we live in that causes us to skip to the end result. Are y'all with me? Our young people, parents, you better take responsibility for your young people at school because the school don't want to flunk your children. They want to pass your children because they want certain advantages. Are y'all with me now? I'm not a school superintendent, and I don't know all the ins and outs of the business, but I do know what I'm talking about. Your, your child is not the only interest at that school. Are y'all here? You, the teacher, I'm here for the children. Yeah, you are. The children help you to be there. See, if the children wasn't there, you couldn't be there. But your only interest is not school teachers. Now, don't frown up at me because I ain't trying to talk about your business or nothing. I'm trying to teach my lesson. Are y'all with me? All right, so I know you can argue with me on what I'm saying. <laughs> That's fine. It ain't going to change, but I, I, I don't mean no harm. Are y'all with me? My whole point is that our, 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 in our school system, they look at the end result. Here's a kid not doing well, and the end result is they've got to pass to the next grade. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah, you hear you on Monday. You talking about Friday, huh? Friday is payday. You know we get paid in Monday morning. You ain't even clocked in good yet. You know, you know Friday is payday. Man, you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's supposed to be all day Friday, but Monday, you talking about Friday? Now somebody says. That that's motivation, Brother Frazier, and it is. It is. You're working for something. But, but, the, but the lesson here is that we think about the end result first before we actually do what's necessary to get to the end result. Are y'all with me? Yeah, and, and, and if we're going to uh, uh, place God over uh, our heart and our eyes, then we've got to start putting him first, not the end result. Every child of God is to love God with all that we are and more than anything else. I want you to take this home with you today, that you've got to love God. If you want God's favor, you've got to love him more than anyone and anything. And if you are, if you're not there yet, add that to your prayer life. Add it to your prayer life. We're going to talk next year. We're going to talk about having a prayer journal. I know we've never, I've never taught having a prayer journal in the church in all my years of being ministry, but I believe that it's now time for us to start writing some things down that we need to pray for. Man, you got all kind of stuff written down in your phone. I know I do. Are y'all with me? Yeah, you need to start, you start making your prayer journal. I, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your iPad, tablet. You can do it on a piece of paper. But you need to start writing some stuff down. Are y'all with me? You hear a sermon and you say, I need some help on this. And who can help you? God can help you. Take it to God. God is not just uh, present in the hospital. Oh, all you, well, well Lord, I'm, 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 I'm sick, and I need you to heal me. He's not just present in the hospital. He can be present in every facet of your life. 
You having problems with your children? You can take that to God in prayer. You having problems in your relationships? You can take that to God in prayer. You want an achievement uh, so that you can better. James, if you want a, uh, an achievement so you can better uh, take care of your family, you can pray to God for that. Don't reduce God. Don't reduce God. In everything, be careful for nothing. But in everything, Philippians 4 and verse 6, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Are y'all with me? Yeah, we've got to love God more than anyone and anything. Now, the question is, how can every Christian grow in such a relationship with God? Well, we're going to go to Mark chapter 12 now. and we've, I've got three uh, things, and I'm going to share as much as I can. Uh, we've got to uh, look at verse 29 now. The Bible says, and Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments, Commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Now, if you write in your Bible, here's what I want you to do. I want you to underline that phrase, hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. Now, Jesus said, hear. Now, this term, hear, means to listen with the intent to obey. Now you think with me now. See, everything that we listen to, so we, we are not sold on. Are y'all with me? Yeah, so you know, you, you, I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with someone and uh, they say, well, you hear me? Uh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know, somebody says, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> and they ain't buying it. So you don't buy everything you hear. Are y'all with me? So you, when, you, when you say, oh, you pulling my leg, you done heard them, but you're not buying it. You don't believe it. You, you're not convinced that that's what you need to do. But this word here, it's not the term here just uh, to intake a sound. This word is in the original language means to listen with the intent to obey. Are y'all with me? So in other words, you are intending to do what God says even before he says it. Now that's deep. That's deep. How, how, how do we understand that? You know, uh, uh, you, you know your parents, you remember you, when you were coming up and uh, your parents, uh, Chris, come here. Uh, Ma'am. And you're waiting. You're waiting for your mother to tell you what she wants you to do. And, and you're waiting with the intent to do it. Whatever uh, whatever mama says, I'm going to do it. That's when you say, ma'am. Yeah, you know, now how many of y'all went through this phase where you said, huh? <laughs> and you got in trouble for it. Huh? Huh? Ha! Huh? <laughs> Don't you haunt me? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How many of y'all have been through that? See, see, see the, the way you answer, the way you answer indicated your submissiveness. See, you said, yeah, no. Uh -huh. you, you, you ain't talking to me. You ain't talking. Your parents, man, look, look here. And now, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we didn't, uh, we didn't have CPS. Some of, some of us sit right here, got slapped in the face. That's, God slapped you and you. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to tell me. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, all you got to do is tell me the year you were born. <laughs> That's all. I said, yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, well, mama ain't never slapped me. That's because you ain't never did it. You, you, some of your brothers and sisters got slapped uh, and you saw what happened to them. And, and you said, well, I ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So obedience allows a person to experience the advantage or disadvantage of listening to and following the instructions of God. So o o obedience, listen, obedience allows a person to experience the advantage or disadvantage. I'm afraid, how in the world can there be a disadvantage uh, of, of listening and following the, the instructions of God? Just look at Jesus. Jesus says, let this cup pass from me. Then, uh, in other words, Jesus knew this was going to be an agonizing experience. He knew that this was going to be a humiliating experience. But he said, nevertheless, see, 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 obedience to God does not eliminate the pain that comes with obedience. Are y'all with me? You got to get that now. Because sometimes we think that obeying God means that everything is going to be comfortable and nice. Okay. I, my Bible says that he's going to change me from corruptible to incorruptible, from mortal to immortal. He hadn't changed me yet. Are y'all with me? So when I get on the other side, that's where there's not going to be any more pain, any more sorrow, any more crying, nor dying, the land of no mores. Are y'all with me? We haven't made it there yet, but we're acting like we have made it. Are y'all with me? That's why I got, that's what I just got through saying. We want to skip all the way to the end. So I, I, want, I want all the comforts of heaven right now. But Jesus teaches us that we're going to have to go through some opposition to make it to the land of no more. So while we constantly believe that advantages or benefits come to us from God when we obey him, God calls on us. Then I, now, now he, he, this is where the vision has to be corrected. So, see, we, we are looking at the advantages. Now, if, if I obey God, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this. Are y'all with me? We count up. What we gonna get? Are y'all with me? Yeah, we do it. We do it. We do it all the time. But now, but now, here's 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 what God is calling us to do. God is calling on us to give Him supremacy in our life every day. See, while we're while we're trying to count up what we're gonna get, God is saying, "Make me supreme. Make me supreme." You make me supreme, you won't have to worry about what you're going to get. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus says, your heavenly father knows you have need of them. Well, Lord, if you know I need it, why don't you just go on and give it to me? Anybody, anybody ever talk to God that way? I'm not trying to get in your business. I'm trying to help you to think now. That's a rhetorical question. Are y'all with me? And why, Lord, why can't? Abraham did it. Abraham did it. God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 17. And, and, and uh, 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 Abraham has been waiting. He's been waiting for a son. And he, he's, uh, God, God gave his, his servant. The chief servant, a son. Abraham says, well, Lord, can't you make Eliezer's son my son? Why don't you just go on and give it to me now? Get to chapter 17 and Abraham still doesn't have a son. Well, Sarah says, well, Abraham, go into Hagar and get your son. 
Here God has a son, and God says to Abraham, ah, uh -uh, no. You and Sarah are supposed to have a son. Abraham wanted God to just, and Sarah too, she wanted God to just go ahead and do it. Well, God, if you don't give it to me, why don't you just go to give it to me? See, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that thinks like that. The Bible says nothing new under the sun. Yeah. There's a lot of folk in time past wanted God to just do, God, just do it for me. We try to bargain with God. God, now if you, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. We bargain with God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, 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 I've stood in hospital room. Lord, if you let me, if you let me get out of this hospital, I'm going to serve you. Bargaining with God. This is where our vision needs to be corrected. God says, you got your eyes on the wrong thing. You, 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 you got your eyes on what you're trying to get. When you ought to just put your eyes on me. Make me supreme. Are y'all with me? And, and, here, and here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing about, here's the thing about this, this scribe. The scribe he was wearing. He was wearing those very words. If, if you study, if you study uh, their attire, they had they had uh, the they had a, a phylactery that was tied to their right arm, and inside this little box of this phylactery, there was this passage here: "O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord." Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. He had it, he had it on his arm. Then he had a frontlet. He had a he had a head ornament. And inside that box again was that scripture. He was wearing it. Are y'all with me? He was wearing those words. He wore it every day. He said it when he got up in the morning. And he said it before he went to bed at night. And all the time, he was trying to count up, what am I going to get from God? What am I going to get? Are y'all with me? Did you make plans to come here this morning? I know I did. I planned yesterday to be here. Are y'all with me? I planned to be here this morning. But I'm here to tell you that you can plan to be here and be ready to sing whatever songs uh, we'll be led in. Participate in all the items of worship and still be sitting there trying to count up, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? That's why your vision needs to be corrected. You need to stop focusing on what you're going to get and start focusing on putting God first. I'm going to listen to you, God. I'm going to listen to you. When, uh, before you open your mouth, I am, I am positioning my mind to obey you. I know, Lord, sometimes when I obey you, it feels good. And sometimes it's very painful. But because you are first, I'm going to do it for you. That's loving God. Mothers, don't you do that to your children. Then the, then the mother says, the baby says, mama, I need some money. And you look at her and say, baby, I, I ain't got but a little bit but for you. I'm going to get, how many mothers have given their child their last? I'll get some more. I'll do it for you. Are y'all with me? Yeah, how, how, how many times have you stood up for your child? You took, stood up for your child. Your child was wrong. And you took the pain of being wrong just because that's my baby. Are y'all with me? Yeah. I don't want you doing my baby like that. Are y'all with me? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what you do when you love. You'll take the pain when you love. But when it comes down to God, when it comes down to God, oh, we, we, we don't want to, we won't want to, it's hot in the church. 
I don't think I'm coming. They ain't working. I'll be down there when they get their ass fixed. Huh? Yeah. Won't take no kind of pain for the Lord. Huh? Yeah, you in front of that uh, that car dealer and the dealer going to uh, say, that, you know, that car knows going to be $600 a month. Well, you know, I just, I just have to find a way. But then, but then you come to church Sunday. The church needs to do a project. Uh, we need to raise $100,000. What? $100,000? Huh? We'll find a way to pay that card note. But man, we'll fuss and fuss and fuss and hold out and hold out, drip and drab. Huh? Trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars and you dropping a dollar <laughs> in the collection plate. Drip, yeah. drip. Yeah. Can't get nowhere because we're not willing to go the extra for the Lord. And the Lord says, put me first. Put me first. You said, Well, brother Fraser, you always talking about. I, I, Cause I, you really, you know, I, I don't preach. I, I, I don't preach about money all the time. I don't. I don't. I don't. But but I just use that as an example. But there are other examples. Other examples. Saturday, Saturday morning. You know, we we doing food pantry. Well, I, I, I that Saturdays I like to sit at home and drink my coffee. Huh? Yeah, that's that's my that's my routine. You won't you won't get out of your comfort zone for God. But you counting up what you're gonna get. And so Jesus says, Hear, O Israel. I believe that that phrase is a phrase we just slide by. We're gonna talk about the Lord our God as one Lord next, but but I want you to just Meditate on here, oh Israel. He wants to be supreme. He wants to be supreme. And if he hasn't been supreme in your life, then you ought to decide today. You ought to decide today. Listen, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to put God first. And you can ask him to help. Lord, help you can ask him to help you do anything that you need to do in order to glorify him. He'll provide you. He provided Israel. Do you remember? He provided Israel with everything they needed to build his temple. He the, the, uh, Moses had to restrain the children of Israel from giving when they built the first tabernacle. But they were giving what God has provided, had provided. Amen. So when you ask him to help you, you're asking him out of knowing that God always helps his children Amen. do what glorifies him. And he'll help you. He'll help you. Help you. He'll help you on this Christian journey. Have you been putting God first? If you haven't, then this is your opportunity to resolve that you're going to. If you're a child of God, make up in your mind that God is right. Repent, confess, and the prayers of the righteous availeth much. James chapter 5 and verse 16. You're not a Christian this morning, then this is a perfect time for you to put God first. You want to make heaven your home. Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the way. You cannot get to the Father any other way than me. I am the way. I'm not a way. 
A says that I'm one of many. D means definite. I'm definitely the only way you can get to the Father. I'm the truth, I'm the light. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Come to Jesus. Believe he died for your sins. Believe he was buried. Believe he rose again the third day. Believe the blood he shed at Calvary. Purchase the church of God, the church of Christ. Acts 20, verse 28, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Repent. Make up in your mind that God is right about everything. You cannot, you cannot make any change according to God's will until you make up in your mind that God is right. He's right. Uh, I say this so many times. You go to the doctor, they give you some medicine. You cannot even pronounce the name of that medicine. All you say is, well, they gave me some more medicine. I got to fill my prescription. I got to go to the drugstore. Man, I don't know if you, I, I've listened to folk talk about going to the drugstore like they're going to see the president of the United States. <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah. It's imperative. You can't even pronounce the name of that medicine. Yeah. All you know is the color. It's that pink pill. That's all you know. Are y'all with me? Why do you take it and you drop it down? You drop it down. You don't know the name of it. They give you a bag with a whole bunch of paper and small writing on it. You don't read none of it. All you do is, is this, this is my medicine. Man, you take that bottle of medicine, put it in your purse, your pocket, carry it with you all the time. Because you believe that that doctor is right. You believe he's right. And if you, you won't take that medicine unless you believe that he is right. You won't listen to anything God says until you start believing that he's right about everything. That's what repentance is. A change of mind that necessitates a change of character. But your mind will never change until you start believing that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38, confess Jesus, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 and verse 38, the Lord will add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47, he'll add you to the church of Christ. Romans 16 and verse 16, the church of Christ is right. Church of Christ is right. Good friend of mine, uh, he's a gospel preacher, and he rededicated his life. I, I, I was with him yesterday. Rededicated his life. We've been knowing each other for a long since the 80s. And he strayed away from the church. He strayed away from great gospel preacher. And he strayed away from the church. And yesterday I was with uh, uh, Brother Elijah Bush out of Birmingham, Brother W.C. Edwards, John Malone from Rogersville. We all got together and we heard him rededicate his life and he understood he church of christ preacher he went preached for other churches but god blessed him to come he says i can't stay away came back church of christ is right it's what you read in the new testament you can't get around it you can't you can't get around it no way. And if you are not a child of God, you need to come this morning. Amen. Become a member of the Church of Christ. This is your opportunity. You can come. If you're on Zoom, please acknowledge yourself by chat, text, and we'll pray. If you're here, you can acknowledge yourself as we stand and sing a song. You know, I once was lost in sin, oh, but Jesus took me in. Oh, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, and it made my heart in love, and it wrote my name above. Now I know that just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Come on and let us have a little talk.
him in Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faith is and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little crap on yearning and your heart of the heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my passing dream is without a ray of cheer. Oh, and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Yes, in the midst of sin may rise, and it hides the starry sky. But I know that just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. them be better tools for God also and to help me in the marriage that I'm planning to try to be in that's coming forthcoming and so I'm just asking for prayers from my brothers and sisters true prayers from you all that have gotten me to this point now are going to carry me to the point that God is ushering me toward so pray with me and for me thank you amen amen well good morning thank you um, brother Frazier for that beautiful message amen. I'm asking for prayers because of my shortcomings as well. Um, asking for you all to be with me, praying for Cameron, Cheyenne, and Keelan, and Caden as well. Continue to pray for our family, um, for my mom and my sister. To continue to be strong for them. So I am asking for you all to be with our family. Thank you. Uh, I'm making some prayers for my brother Harold. He's uh, going to have surgery to uh, hip replacement. So when I'm asking the church for faith for the Brown family, pray for myself and that I get stronger and my shortcomings. We all fall short of the glory of God. But I'm asking for y'all prayer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I had some friend of mine called me yesterday. He lost his wife. And he said he's having problems with you know, making arrangements and, and going through with the family. His name is Gerald Winston. He said he's mine, y'all, so please pray for him and also pray for the baby's family. Amen. 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 Amen
couple more requests. We have Sister Sheila Leonard. Um, Sister Leonard is asking prayers for she and her family. And she also confesses of sin. We're going to definitely keep the Leonard family in prayer. Amen. Also, we have visiting with us today, um, Madden Audrey Anderson, there from Mississippi, um, and from the Yaz Yaz Yazoo Church of Christ there in Mississippi. And they are asking prayers for um, the minister of the Tallulah Church of Christ there in Mississippi, for Brother MacArthur Williams. He is recovering from COVID, and also he suffered a stroke. Um, so let's keep the MacArthur, Brother MacArthur Williams. Um, he uh, is a um, graduate of Southwestern, and he's um, good friends with Brother Harper, Brother Robert Harper. So let's keep Brother MacArthur Williams, um, gospel preacher, in prayer. And, uh, and we also want to um, acknowledge, uh, we'll acknowledge Brother and Sister Anderson in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, we also have a request from Sister Cannon. Sister Cannon wanted to uh, thank everyone for their prayers, calls, texts, and concerns for her sister Elaine. And, and the family. Um, and Sister Elaine is still in a Methodist hospital and please continue to pray for Elaine um, at this time. If there's not any other prayer requests, let's go to our Heavenly Father in a word of prayer as we are going to petition these requests uh, as a collective body at this time. Um, dear Father, we thank you today. Thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to worship you today. We want to thank our man servant, Brother Frazier, for allowing him to have the knowledge to study the education to impart your word into us today, Father. We pray, Father, that we have vision correction, that we had our glasses on this morning, that we can see your word more clearly than we did before. And we pray, Father, that we will utilize this and not only outside the, um, not only inside of these walls, but outside of these walls. We want to keep um, the um, Sister Leonard, Sheila Leonard, and the Leonard family in prayer, Father. Um, you know what they are in need of. And we also want to, uh, she also acknowledges um, confession of sin. And we pray, Father, that you will write those sin, that sin from your book of remembrance, Father, and continue to bless them in their walk with you, Father. We want to also keep um, Sister Cannon, and in particular, her sister Elaine in prayer. You know what Elaine is needing right now, Father? You, she's in that bed at Methodist Hospital. And you just want you to touch your hand, Father. We want you to, we, we, we were taught today, Father, that we need to ask you. And we are asking you for healing for Elaine at this time. Be with Sister Edith as she continues to care for her sister um, and, 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 and be an advocate for her sister. But continue to pray for her, Father, at this time. We also want to keep in prayer, Father, um, Brother MacArthur Williams, a gospel preacher in Mississippi. He's going through um, a many health issues with the stroke and also complications from the COVID virus. We want to continue to pray for he and his family, as well as the congregation in which he serves. We want to continue to pray for him for full healing, Father. Also, Father, we want to keep the um, sister um, excuse me, Brother James LaCour in prayer as he expressed himself to be a more of a spokesman for you, Father. And you continue to pray for him, pray for he and Tamika's upcoming nuptials, um, Father, that they will continue to walk in your light, Father. We also want to pray for Tamika and continue to keep Sister Randall in prayer and her sister in prayer during their health um, issues. Father, you know what those issues are. And we also want to keep the, um, her family in prayer, her children as a mother, keep her children in prayer, Father, as they are continuing to need you every day in their lives. We also want to keep Brother Harold Brown in prayer, Father, you know, as he will be undergoing um, surgical procedures on tomorrow. We want to pray for him for full healing. We want to pray for Sister Brown as she will, will be providing um, um, care to him when he makes it home and that, that he'll be able to come back and worship with us at the next time when he is up and ready and is healthy to do so. We thank you for him. Thank you for his brother who asked for prayers on his behalf. We also, also want to keep Brother Sidney in prayer, continue to bless him with physical health. And we also um, want to pray for those requests that was made for the person um, that he requested prayers for, um, being Mr. Davis um, as well. Um, you know what he's needing, Father. You know that he's going through um, a period of, of transition. Continue to be with that family at this time and provide care as needed, Father. We pray, Father, that all of us who are in this room, this building this afternoon, will remember you and put you first in our daily endeavors. 
and, it's, and, 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 uh, and that we pray, Father, and that you continue to bless us and keep us, and keep us and strong in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, let the church say amen. 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 We, we want to acknowledge our visitors. We have visiting with us this morning um, from the Jersey Village Church, um, Damian Wilson, Damian Wilson. Um, Damon, Brother Damon, um, this year is right there in the middle there. But raise your hands so we can see you, sir. Okay, give him a nice cashmere welcome. As was mentioned before, we have Madden Audrey Anderson of Lexington, Mississippi. Um, their um, home congregation is in the Yazoo Church of Christ. I hope I didn't mess that name up too bad. Brother and Sister Anderson. Do we have any other visiting guests with us this morning? Any other visiting guests with us? Right here. Oh, yes, yes, there you go. One of our food pantry um, they, when they say they're going to be here, they actually come. We don't take that for granted. Good seeing you. All right. Do we have any other guests with us today? Any other guests? Are our guests welcome? Are they welcome? Do better than that cash here. We don't take that for granted. Um, we thank all of our visitors for coming. And don't be a visitor much longer. Keep on visiting with us. Amen? Amen. Um, we're going to ask everyone, we have a um, little program following our services this afternoon. Don't get up. So don't leave. Um, we're going to uh, do some acknowledgments of some of our um, members here at Cashmere. So stay in your seat. I promise you it won't be more than 10, 15 minutes. Then after that, you can be dismissed. Then we can go and eat that good food you made. But right now, let's stay in your seats. And we won't do a closing prayer. We have our closing prayer after the program. So stay in your seats. Um, Brother Fraser, give us a song while we set up. And we can go from forth. Come on. Without you, Lord. Without you, Lord.
paved the way. On December the 5th, uh, December the 9th, 2001, we set plaques on the ground to honor Sister Belina Mitchell and brother and sister Kelly. Today, almost 20 years to the day, we're going to do so today. So will Sister April Corbana come down? After this service, we want Brother Lane to uh, give us a closing prayer and uh, 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 pretty play for the church. And, uh, okay. This is a joyous occasion for all assembled here today. As we gather together this afternoon on the first Sunday of the month of December, we take this time to honor a few of the beloved members of the Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ that have played a significant role in the church, in the work of Christ Church here at 4315 Leffingwell, Houston, Texas. These individuals stood the test of time in helping the church to grow spiritually and numerically. Over the years, they have done many wonderful works, all to the glory of God. Because of their dedication to the growth and well-being of the church that has stood here on this little corner, well over 60 years. We say thank you for paving the way for those of us who follow. Now, without any further ado, we the members of the Cashmere Gardens Church of Christ dedicate with love these engraved granite stones to the following persons for the foundation laid by Jesus Christ going back to AD 33. Today, Sunday, December 5th, 2021, with heartfelt gratitude, we symbolically recognize during the You Pave the Way Appreciation Ceremony, the following seven persons. Please hold all applause until the names are presented. Sydney and Joanne Harris. Sister Mary Woodard. Amen. Brother and Sister Julius and Margaret Mosley. And Brother and Sister Hulon and Maggie Shepherd. Thank you. So, with Brother Frazier, we're going to ask for a few remarks. Uh, short remarks, and, uh, and and after the after Brother Persia remarks, we're gonna have Brother uh, Lang to come up and ask prayer. And we afterwards we want out to receive and come up so we take a picture. Amen. Amen. The when uh, many of us have been here for uh, a long time, and. Um, to think of these brothers and sisters who are listed here, um, our heart, it, it just smiles. Um, uh, you know, brother and sister Shepherd, um, uh, brother and sister Mosley, brother Sydney, and sister Joanne, sister Woodard, um, it, they are, they're deserving of, in my estimation, they're deserving of so much more. But we, uh, we don't ever want to forget. And this is the reason why we're doing this. We don't want to forget those who have labored for many, many years so that we can be on this corner doing what we do. And um, 
it, I know that um, uh, a lot of things have transpired uh, down through the years between 2001 and, and this day, but God has brought us. He has brought us to this point. And as the lesson states, hear, O Israel. We listen to God, willing to obey. And God will take us another 20 years or however long he sees fit. Thank you, uh, Brother and Sister Shepherd, Brother Shepherd. I know Sister Shepherd is going on, but Brother, Brother Shepherd, thank you publicly. publicly. We don't want to uh, wait until he's gone. He's here. He's able to hear. And we want to thank you for being with us, working with us, sharing with us, teaching us. Sometimes you teach and you're not in front of a class. Are y'all with me? And uh, we thank you. Uh, Sister Mosley, I know Brother Mosley's gone. But from the depths of our heart, we thank you for being Sister Mosley, Brother Mosley, Brother Mosley. You got, I tell you, I, I, I can still hear that voice in my mind, Brother Mosley. Uh, and uh, Sister Mosley just continues to labor. She works hard. She and Sister Woodard work so hard. So I, I, I tell them sometimes, y'all children are gonna come here and wanna kill me. I, I, cause, cause y'all work so hard. I, I, only thing I can say is I, uh, I'm not making them. They doing it because they want to do it. They love God. They love God. Thank you so much, Sister Woodard and Brother Sidney. Brother Sidney, Brother Sidney. I know Brother Sidney had to go get his ride. Oh, he's in the restaurant? Okay. Uh, but Brother Sidney, I tell you, uh, he uh, he has a beautiful spirit. Beautiful spirit. Beautiful spirit. And um, he worked he worked so hard. Even, even though he can't move like he used to, he's still still trying to do. Still doing what he does. And I my heart just smiles. And I'm just so grateful to God that I've had an opportunity to work with you and uh, know you and love you. And uh, we must continue. We must continue, church. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29, we, we're not here to, to digress. We're not here to go back. We've got to go forward. we got to go forward. And so we walk up the, walk that walk up to that front door and we look at these plaques, you know, they, we thank God and we keep going. We keep going. God bless you. God bless you. We want everyone to come by and look at the plaques and they will be put in the ground, hopefully this week if the weather permits. Brothers and sisters with bowed heads and humble hearts, may we go to our heavenly father in prayer. My Heavenly Father, as always, the first words that comes off of my lips, I have to say thank you. Thank you, dear Lord, for being the wonderful, great God that you are. A God that is so good that you gave your only begotten Son to come to a sin-cursed world to save sinners like me and us. Dear Lord, we can't say thank you enough. But dear Lord, I have to say thank you for recognizing those who have paved the way. From the day that I came here 30 years ago, each one of those names, starting with Sister Woodard, my Lord, my Lord, such a hard fighting little soldier. Sister and Brother Mosley, my Lord, what hard fighting soldier. Brother Shepherd and Sister Shepherd, Lord have mercy. And then my brother, Brother Sidney. Yeah. Brother Sidney is one of the hardest working men I've ever seen in the Lord's house. Yeah. Yes, he is a good, humble servant. Yeah. And dear Lord, I just ask you to those that are still here with us, thank you. Thank you for letting us have the sense and the honor to recognize those who have paved the way. Dear Lord, it's a blessing when people recognize you for 
good deeds and not calling your name for the bad things we have seen. Those seven individuals, dear Lord, have been at this little church, but what I call it, this little hospital, because we are all here because we do have ailments, whether it's by words, our feelings, our age, our sickness, dear Lord, we are all here in this building for a purpose to see someone who can help heal and help us with the problems and issues that we have in this world of today. But these seven, dear Lord, are so worthy of this honor. They have contributed, and that not only them, dear Lord, there are so, so many more. And I hope as time go by, we will recognize all that have labored in your house. And there are so many here at the Cashmere Garden Church of Christ. And I'm so thankful to be a member of this little congregation because it is, as Brother Fraser said, it is the way. It is the right way. It is the church that's going to give you what the Lord wants us to do and to be humble and servants and love ye one another. That's all he has because he gave us a promise. The promise is that I go to prepare a place for you. And if it wasn't so, I wouldn't tell you. Therefore, dear Lord, I'm standing on the promises of the Lord, and I know they will come true. As my mother say, he has never lied yet, my Lord. And for those seven who are receiving, I'm so thankful that we're giving them their flowers while they're still here to be able to smell and enjoy them. And for this congregation, and especially the visitors, if you're visiting, we welcome you. We have a home for you. You don't have to go and look any further. Let your footsteps stop right here because they will be the footsteps that can lead you into the kingdom of God. Thank you, dear Lord, for this little church and this little hospital that sits on this little corner. And most of all, dear Lord, thank you for your wonderful messenger. Oh, dear Lord, the five steps of soul salvation says, first, you must hear the word. And each one of you that's sitting here now, we've heard Brother Frazier, and he is a true messenger of the Lord. He don't add, he don't take away. He gives us exactly what your word says. And that, dear Lord, we should be grateful and honored for. Thank you, dear Lord, for Cashmere Garden Church of Christ and its members. And I pray that we will take those words and go out into the word and become your messengers like you said. You know we've seen, we've heard, now go out and spread it like we should. In the sweet name of Jesus, who died and gave it all that we may have life, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Excuse me, excuse me. You can't go this way. It's a house fire and they got everything blocked down. So everybody go back this way. You can't go towards Crane Street. So don't even go out trying. He knows ain't nothing good. All our honorees, please come down front so we can take your picture. All of our honorees, come down front. You can take your picture.
Thank you. 